All right, hopefully that set of examples went well. Let's now discuss calculation using engineering prefixes and how to express the results in proper engineering format rounded to desired degree of accuracy. In the not too distant future, we'll soon put aside math for math's sake and be calculating electrical properties. This might seem a little confusing at first given no prior knowledge of electrical circuit analysis. However, I'm asking you to just ignore the properties for now and instead concentrate on just the math and engineering format. One of the basic electrical properties we'll soon be examining is known as Ohm's law where current through an element is equal to the voltage across it divided by resistance. Current is measured in units of amps. Voltage is measured in units of volts. Resistance is measured in units of ohms. Given known voltage and known resistance can easily calculate current by dividing voltage by resistance. I equals V over R. For example, let's say resistor 1 has a resistance of 1.2 kilo ohms. It's additionally known to have a 17.1 volt differential across it. Solve for current. I1 equals V1 over R1. Note R1 has a value of 1.2 kilo ohms, i.e. 1,200 ohms expressed in the base unit. One must enter this value in the calculator with a proper indicator of magnitude. Enter 17.1 divided by 1.2 EE3. Press enter. The calculator returns a value in units of amps of 14.25 E negative 3. This is the calculator's way of saying 14.25 milliampers. If we were asked to express this in proper engineering format, rounded to the tenths place, this would be roughly 14.3 milliampers. I don't want to belabor this subject any more than is necessary, so we'll wrap it up with these simple points of advice. Follow the order of operations enter the numbers properly and interpret and round the final results accordingly. 1.2 kilo ohms is 1,200 ohms and it is not 1.2 ohms. 1.43 milliampers is 0 0.0143 amps and it is not 14.3 amps. You must properly account for a number's magnitude using proper engineering format. Let's put your understanding of this concept to a test with this series of illustrated examples. Again, don't worry so much about the properties right now, but rather focus on the math involved and how to enter and interpret quantities using engineering prefixes. To help you out, I've included the units associated with each final answer. For example, problem one is an alternate permutation of Ohm's law asking to solve for voltage in units of volts given known current in units of amps and resistance in units of ohms. Enter amps and ohms into the calculator using proper engineering format and then just read the results in units of volts. Express all answers in proper engineering format rounded to the tenths place. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Our first problem is asking us to solve for V in units of volts, where V equals I times R. Enter this as 407.6 EE negative 3 times 171. Press enter. Expressed in proper engineering format rounded to the tenths place, V is equal to 69.7 volts. Our second problem is asking us to solve for R in units of ohms, where R is equal to V over I. Enter this as 120 divided by 30 EE negative 3. Press enter. Expressed using proper engineering format, the answer is 4 kilo ohms. Our third problem asks us to solve for P in units of watts where P equals V times I. Enter this as 690 times 24. Press enter. Expressed using proper engineering format round to the tenths place, P is equal to 16.6 kilowatts. Our next problem asks us to solve for P in units of watts, where P is equal to V squared over R. Enter this as 28.3 carat 2 divided by 4.3 EE3. Press enter. Expressed using proper engineering format round to the tenths place, yields a final result of 186.3 milliwatts. Our next problem asks us to solve for P in units of watts, where P is equal to I squared R. Enter this as 25.7 EE negative 3 raised to the second power times 1.2 EE3. Press enter. Expressed user proper engineering format rounded at the tenths place, yields a final result of 792.6 milliwatts. Our next problem asks us to solve for V in units of volts, where V is equal to the square root of P times R. 
Notice P times R are both under the square root operator. This means we need to perform the multiplication first. We can do this in two steps. 500 times 620. Press enter. Square root, second answer, yields a final resolve, 556.8 volts, expressed using proper engineering format rounded to the tenths place. Our final problem asks us to solve for I in units of amps, where I is equal to square root P over R. Again, notice the operation P divided by R is entirely below the square root operator. It's again perhaps easiest to enter this in two stages. Let's perform P divided by R first. Enter 1E3 divided by 50, press enter. Square root, second answer, gives a final result of roughly 4.5 amperes, expressed using engineering format round to the tenths place. All right, we are just about done here. Before I let you go, I need your utmost attention regarding previous results as it relates to multi-step calculations. Often in the course of your studies, you'll be asked to solve for some property and express the answer using proper engineering format rounded to the tenths place. Then, you'll be asked to solve for some other property and express that answer using proper engineering format rounded to the tenths place. Then, you'll expect to use the results of these two calculations or even three or four more calculations to perform yet another calculation. Each result feeds the next stage, and if you use the rounded approximations, there's a loss of fidelity at each step. The key to avoiding this preventable disaster is don't use rounded approximations. Use the previous results. The point being, round the final answer, but use the most accurate representation of that quantity, i.e. the previous results for the purposes of calculation. If you use the rounded approximations, your results will get less and less accurate the more rounded approximations you use. Allow me to demonstrate. For example, consider a four-step sequence used to solve for power dissipated by an individual resistive element in a series DC circuit. We'll examine series DC circuit properties in greater details in later lectures. For now, just ignore the electrical properties and try to focus your attention on the math involved. You should notice how rounded approximations and previous results quickly diverge the further we get into the sequence. Step 1. Solve for total resistance. Series resistances add up. R total equals R1 plus R2 plus R3. Resistance is measured in units of ohms. Enter 390 plus 510 plus 430 and press enter. The calculator says 1.33 E3, which means 1330 ohms using the base unit. If you're asked to express this result using proper engineering format round of the tenths place, this would be roughly 1.3 kilo ohms. Step two, solve for source current. Source current is supply voltage in units of volts divided by total resistance in units of ohms. Source current is measured in units of amps. We're presented with the first fork in the trail. We have a choice of using the previous results or the prior rounded approximation. Use the previous results. 12 volts divided by second answer yields an answer of roughly 9.0 milliamp years using proper engineering format round of the tenths place. This is the correct answer. Using series circuit properties, we can say current through elements in series is the same. Source current equals I1, which equals I2, which equals I3. If, however, we use the rounded approximation of total resistance, we get an inaccurate, i.e. incorrect answer. 12 divided by 1.3 kilo ohms yields an answer of roughly 9.2 milliamp years using proper engineering format rounded to the tenths place. This is an incorrect answer. See where I'm going with this? We're only two steps into a four-step calculation where we're already off the trail. It can only get worse from here. Step three, solve for voltage drop across individual elements. The voltage drop across an individual element in a series circuit and measured in units of volts is current through that individual element in units of amps times resistance in units of ohms. V1 equals I1 times R1. We're again presented with another fork in the trail. We have a choice of using the accurate previous results or using the rounded approximation. Use the previous results. Walk up and grab the most accurate representation, i.e. the previous results for source current times 390. Press enter. This yields an answer of roughly 3.5 volts using proper engineering format rounded to the tenths place. This is the correct answer. If, however, you use the rounded approximation of source current from our previous incorrect calculation, we get an increasingly inaccurate, an increasingly incorrect answer. 9.2 milliamperes times 390 ohms yields an answer of roughly 3.6 volts using proper engineering format round of the tenths place. This is a wrong answer.
We are now three steps into a four-step calculation and we're way off the trail. Step four, solve for power dissipated by individual element. Power in units of watts is equal to voltage across the individual element in units of volts times current through the individual element in units of amps. P1 equals V1 times I1. We're again presented with yet another fork in the trail. We have a choice of using the accurate previous results or the rounded approximation. Use the previous results. Walk up and grab the most accurate representation, i.e. the previous results for voltage, times the most accurate representation for current. Press enter. This yields an answer of roughly 31.7 milliwatts using proper engineering format rounded to the tenth place. This is the correct final answer. It's correct because we use the most accurate representation each and every step in the multi-step sequence and we never lost any data along the way. If, however, we use the rounded approximation of voltage and the rounded approximation of current from our previous incorrect calculations, we get an increasingly, increasingly inaccurate, i.e. increasingly, increasingly incorrect answer. 3.6 volts times 9.2 milliampers yields an answer of roughly 33.1 milliwatts using proper engineering format rounded to the tenth place. We have totally lost the trail and are deep in the blackberries. This answer, despite it following the same conceptual path as the other, is wrong. The reason it's wrong is because it used the wrong entries for every single calculation after step one. In summary, even if you do it right, you'll get a still wrong answer if you use the wrong numbers. Here's my advice. Use the right numbers. Use the previous results. If that isn't enough to convince you, there's yet another valid reason to use the previous results. Not only does it yield a correct answer, it does so in less time than tediously manually re-entering incorrect data. Your choice, the correct answer in less time or the wrong answer in more time. In summary, use the previous results. You'll be glad you did. As a quick test of your understanding of this concept, I'm asking you to evaluate these two expressions and express your answer rounded to the tenth place. By all means, pause the lecture and try this yourself. If you're tracking, you should have gotten the following answers. 8 divided by 3 yields 2.7 rounded to the tenth place. 18 divided by 7 yields 2.6 rounded to the tenth place. Simple enough, right? Now perform the following calculation. 8 divided by 3 plus 18 divided by 7. Express your answer rounded to the tenth place. By all means, pause the lecture, try this yourself. If you're tracking, you should have gotten the following results. Spoiler alert, the answer is not 5.3. If you got 5.3, rewind the lecture and listen to the important points I made about rounded approximations and previous results. Never use the rounded approximations. Always use the most accurate previous results. Making use of the most accurate previous results, the correct answer to 8 divided by 3 plus 18 divided by 7 rounded to the tenths place is 5.2. I say again, never use the rounded approximations for calculation purposes. Always use the previous results. Not only will you get a correct answer, you will get a correct answer quickly. All right, that's about it for now. In closing, I'd like to remind viewers that while reasonable care has been exercised with respect to the accuracy of these lectures, I assume no responsibilities for errors, omissions, or suitability for any application or misapplication of their contents. Long story short, I'm going to dork up a calculation one of these days, and if I do, I'm going to do my best to issue a correction in the information and or comment section associated with this lecture. If you do notice something there, please let me know and I'll do my best to correct it as soon as possible. In conclusion, this lecture presented a review of the order of operations, negative fractional exponents, and the scientific calculator. I should level with you. If you feel incapable or unqualified to perform these skills without outside guidance, I am urging you to seek help instantly or turn back now. Electrical circuit analysis is taught with a language of numbers, and you must have a basic fluency to understand the contents of this series. Remember to review this material as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again in the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.